So I've had a shaper for about two weeks now. Probably have about four or five hours on it, working on different experiments, tests, learning. Uh, for this, I just wanted to kind of do some practicing with offsets to try to make a simple box, uh, but a round one. So the first thing I need to do is take a new scan of my workspace so that I, I already have the workstation scanned, but I wanted to rescan it with the work piece on the workstation so that when I place my grid, I'll be able to see the actual work piece, kind of get a better idea of where I'm at. So I have to get some pretty high angles there to scan the, the piece of wood. It's just a scrap of poplar that I threw in there and I've covered up the rest of the workbench so that none of the shaper tape there is visible uh, to the machine. I don't want it accidentally including that area in the workspace. So I need to do a bit change because I still have the three quarter inch long quarter inch up spiral bit. Uh, I have a white side one inch long bit. My work piece is about 83 hundredths thick, so a little over three quarter. Uh, I want to have a, a little bit longer bit in there. When I set the bit, I made sure I had enough shank beyond the cutting part of the tool so that I would be able to uh, define the grid with the edge of the, the bit itself. So I just lower the bit all the way down um, and then I'll be able to use the shank of the bit to set these two initial points that create the horizontal axis of the grid. And then uh, after I've got those, I can bring it around the side and do the third point to define the vertical axis of the grid. The shelf is just a little bit longer than my piece of wood. So I had to make sure that I took my grid points off the edges there out of the way. And it also means that I need to use a little bit of a shim there. Uh, I do have the piece of wood held down to the, the shelf with double-sided tape which is pretty effective, but uh, if I can kind of cram everything in there and tighten it up, that helps. So I'll just start off with a simple circle. Um, and I came up with the size of the circle, uh, wrong number there, but I came up with the size based on the interior dimensions that I wanted for this project uh, of three and a quarter. And then I want a half inch sidewall or a quarter inch sidewall on each side all the way around the radius there. So just a three and three quarter circle. And I could probably get away with just placing a single large circle and doing all the offsets from that, but um, it seemed to be a little easier to define the exterior of the piece and the interior of the piece separately with more circles. They're free. So that inner circle is three and a quarter inches. And uh, because I hadn't moved the router, um, I placed it right there and I'll place a second one. So I zoom out, you can see the entire workspace, you can see the work piece itself, and you can see the geometry that I've overlaid uh, on that work piece. And I can get kind of an augmented reality view of exactly where I'm gonna be putting my, doing my cutting. And uh, so I'll go ahead and start with the outer, outer cut. Uh, change this over to an outside cut. Uh, I only want to do a quarter inch depth cut uh, per pass. So it's going to take multiple passes and no offsets initially here. I'll do my Z-touch. Since I just changed the bit, I want to make sure that's set. So the router will measure the counter to, or the top of the work, work piece and use that as the reference for depth.
naturally I start cutting and uh, what a mess. Um, noticed pretty quickly that uh, I forgot some forgot to turn on the backing. So I've cut the outsides of both circles, now I'm going to cut the insides of the circles, uh, changing it over to a pocket cut, which holds back from the edge of the, the defined circle, the geometry, just a little bit, and uh, you kind of get to get turned loose to cut out the uh, interior there. There's not a lot of correction from the router, it doesn't do anything until you're at the edge. So we'll clean it up and this is what I'm left with after the initial uh, passes at a quarter inch of depth. Everything looks right, so I'm just gonna do some more passes, uh, another pass, uh, I'll change it to a half inch of depth, and hog all of that out, redo the outside. So all that cleaned up, now it's a little bit deeper um, all the way around. It's still just cutting the outside of the outer circle and the inside of the inner circle, leaving a little quarter inch wall there. So now I've changed the depth to an eighth and I changed the cut to an online cut. So since I have a quarter inch bit, if I change that to an online cut, I'm gonna overlap my previous cut by an eighth inch, half the diameter of the bit. Uh, and I only wanna do an eighth inch depth cut. I probably could have done it maybe a little deeper than that. But eighth inch works. So that was the left hand circle. Now I'm gonna switch over to the right hand circle and I'm gonna go to the inside circle and do an online cut at that eighth inch depth. Just a little bit of an offset. So now once everything has been cut out on both sides, you can see that I've, I've got a, a raised ridge on one side and a recess that matches it on the other. So now I'm going to cut all the way through my material, uh, or mostly all the way through. I think it measured out to be like 83 hundredths or something. So just a slight amount left uh, of onion skin there that holds it to there. Uh, it was probably unnecessary because the double stick tape was very, very effective at holding that on. See the difficulty pulling that off. And uh, probably could have used less tape to a lot of cleanup of the tape afterwards. So I'll break these pieces loose, clean up the onion skin. Just gonna take a razor knife and rake the edge with the edge of the blade to clean up the majority of it and then do a little bit of sanding here and there. Since this was just a test and experiment I, I didn't want to go overboard with all the cleanup. Um, if there was a, a nicer box that I was putting together I'd probably spend a lot more time 
probably too much time cleaning up if I was doing a nicer box, but I chose that three and a quarter interior size to fit a roll of shaper tape. Everything fit pretty tight. Um, I should have probably done a little more of an offset when I was doing those eighth inch overlapping cuts for the raised and recessed parts. Um, a little bit of an offset in each direction. So I'd pry it apart and do a little more cleanup uh, with sand, paper, and uh, not a whole lot more, but enough <laughs> that could have been prevented by doing a little more offset. I found a custom label for this box uh, so I'd always know what was in it. So there it is. Thanks.